Bleeding Purple Podcast. Welcome in to Bleeding Purple, a podcast about the Minnesota Vikings. My name is Tyler Haig, and I am joined by the uh, almost father, Adam Patrick. Hello, good yep. sir. How are you? Good. Just in, enjoying my last few days of uh, being alone mm-hmm. in this world. Yeah. Yep. Of the, not being responsible. Yeah, but here are some here are some things that you get that people don't talk about is patience. I have more patience now. Oh, I I already have patience. Than yeah. I ever thought. You're that is correct because I've seen you on Twitter. I've seen the way you respond. To people. A lot of patience. A lot of patience for you. <laughs> that's a different. Yeah, that's different. Though. <laughs> a little bit different. <laughs> that's more. That's more fun. Yeah, definitely. And um, yeah. Twitter was fun last night for a hot minute there after um, the Vikings win. Oh, by the way, it's a after, Vikings podcast. Uh, the Vikings won after they they uh, what they got the on, was it onside kick that they got? Did they get onside? Mm, did they wind up with the onside kick? I just remember there was a punt and they muffed the punt and we got the ball and I was like, "Woo!" That was that. I can't. I don't even remember if there I was an onside like kick. There was an onside kick attempted. You know, I don't remember though. I can't right? remember. Interesting. That's, we're good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, good thing a, we're covering the Vikings. Let's talk a little bit more about the stuff that we did watch. Yeah. You know, and uh, the rest of the game. But uh, so yeah, the Vikings win twenty four seventeen. I cannot believe that neither of us predicted that score. I looked back to see if we did. Neither of us went with huh? uh, twenty. 2417 which yeah, that's pretty generic yeah super generic and usually my pick is it not like how did i when did i stop <laughs> yeah. doing the 2417 every week i don't remember but this would have been a good week to pick it the vikings were i don't want to say in control but they were looking pretty good at times they were looking pretty mediocre at times kirk cousins of course finishes the game with his impressive stat line which is like almost kind of yawn worthy at this point but biggest thing no turnovers he did not right. turn the ball over. That was the biggest thing. He finished no with problem. 342 yards, three touchdowns, two, three touchdowns. Three. And uh, the defense looked really good also. I think that is uh, cannot be understated how good. Held Rodgers under 200 yards. Under 200 yards, which is uh, very impressive. And now the Vikings have not lost to the Green Bay Packers in a very, very long time. It was like 20... 700 days 15. or something. I retweeted it. I was going to oh, write it down and. 2016 because it was uh it was on the road is when Bradford was there. Oh, Bradford. But they yeah they haven't they didn't lose last year at all and they haven't lost this year so yeah. it's been a while. Because ties don't count as uh, losses. Right. Sure they, they don't count as wins either. They but yeah, they don't. But uh, there yeah. was an onside kick by the way. There was good. Good to and know. Kyle Rudolph, Kyle Rudolph recovered it. Oh yes, that's right. I I knew that. Um, I was watching. He, it turns out he didn't, I was watching for that. He didn't get any yards after the catch. Surprise! No, he just fell right down. Which is, yeah. you know, you're yeah. used to seeing that shots fired early. Yeah. So Cousins finishes with a really pretty stat line. The offense looked, you know, pretty good at times, but it looked after like, after the first two drives. Yeah. Yeah. There were. What did you think? What was your, uh, I guess, your big take on the offense as a whole? Because we've done a lot of a lot of talking about the play calling, offensive coordinating, yep. et cetera, et cetera. What was your take from? Um, I've seen a lot of people say how it was more balanced last night, but I don't really think it really was because they didn't. They like it's. it's you look at this box score and it says that they ran a lot and they ran a lot more, but that was more like in the fourth quarter on their last couple drives when they were up and they're trying to run the clock out. Otherwise, they were still pretty pass happy. You know, after the first quarter, I think they got got in their scripted plays, you know, 
run so many times, pass so many times, and then after that, it was just back to, you know, pass, pass, pass. I mean, it works, this game, because the Packers' defense is horrible, oh. and they're, especially their secondary. You're taking uh, all of my, everything yeah. I was going to say. And so, Thielen and Diggs, right you know, had, right had the just the time of their life, just going all over these guys, and Dalvin Cook shredding the pieces, too. It was nice to see him get more involved in the, in the receiving game. It was. Even if, he, even if he's not going, you know, running the ball or whatever. Because you know they're running him into the middle of the line, mm-hmm. uh, just getting getting him out out in space and getting getting the ball. Because there was a couple of times where he got the ball and it's like, oh, it's going to be like a one yard gain, and then he broke like nine tackles and yeah, and got a first down. There were glimpses so, of how good Dalvin Cook can be, and the yeah. guy that the way that everybody talks about him, you know, and you kind of forget because he's been out for so long and hasn't looked like that. But man, there were a couple of plays last night where it was like, oh yes, that's right, Dalvin Cook is a. Uh, a very explosive player. And I think you like you nailed all of the points that I was going to bring up, but you don't have to run the ball, but you have to be able to disperse the ball amongst your, your, uh, your uh, yeah. receivers, I guess, for lack of a better term. And they were doing that. They were doing it early. The first quarter was beautiful from like a run pass screen. There was a screen in the first quarter, Adam. We haven't seen that. And <laughs> it feels like forever, or at least a successful one. Elfline yep. was out in space, which is what that you screen want. the digs was not successful. No, it was not. And the, you're right. And they kind of regress as the game goes on. And they they, I feel like what's happening is the the people who are calling the plays, the one guy who's calling the plays, people yeah. is acknowledging that his best players are those two wide receivers and his quarterback, which is understandable because those yep. are your best players. But unless you get the offense the rushing offense to work yeah. those guys can't do it on their own and they will and lose games yeah. where he throws where cousins throws 50 times and the only offense they have is the running game and they look like they're even, always trying to do that yeah i don't even know if you have to get the running game so-called going or whatever you just i feel like you have to just make sure you run a certain amount of times because especially with the vikings and especially with kirk cousins and you know how successful he is with play action you know just just having the threat of them handing the ball off yes. is, is enough is was, enough to throw off a defense. It was so. so apparent on that first drive. Oh yeah. That just running the ball on those whatever three plays in a row on the first drive or whatever it was yeah. did so much for their play action in the next two drives in the like first quarter in general. It uh, yeah. it drives me crazy because it seems so obvious to do these little things that will allow you to be successful later on in the game, why do you think they cannot stick to yeah. that? I know, I know we ask for like De Filippo to be more creative. And then sometimes I feel like he tries too hard to be like too creative. Like there's ways yes. to be creative and simple at the same time, just the jet sweeps and stuff like that. But then like, like the, the screen passes to receivers and like, to a reverse to a pass or whatever, like some of these crazy plays. Yeah, you can supposed. overcomplicate a screen yeah. pass. You can. It's very possible. And I feel like he does that on occasion. And yeah. when all you need to do is just run a normal, yeah. give it to your running back in the flat and let him go to town. Here's my hot take theory. Coming off of Chicago, Zimmer talked about how maybe the offense had too much as in volume. I think, stick with me now. I think what was happening was the receivers and quarterback, they were running a lot of options. They had options based on coverages. I think they had too many options. I think they were reading them incorrectly. I think that's why some of those throws in Chicago looked so bad is because they were reading different things and not on the same page. Yeah. Just run one rep. You know, they've only been, they've only played what 11 games together. They're not obviously not at the point yet where they know what, what each other's thinking. That probably won't happen, you know, until the middle of next year. Um, if that, yeah. So, and like yeah, digs just run, feeling, run. I, yeah. I get it. But you got Treadwell trying to read what route <laughs> and, he's supposed to. Are you bonkers? Like, go and on. even what uh, Aldrick Robinson last night. He he obviously that was like the first or second drive where he miscommunicated with yes. what Cousins was thinking. And yeah, I think they simplified some of the playbook. They obviously just decided to rip all the pages out that had Treadwell's name on them out of the playbook. Uh, still managed to have a drop, though. <laughs> it's why, crazy. What is, the, what is the point of him being on the field? Like, they, I think Cousins finally figured out. He's like, you know what? I'm just going to like throw it more to Rudolph because at least he can catch the ball. 
So he might not, you know, gain that many yards after the catch, which Treadwell doesn't either, but, you know, at least he's going to catch the ball. I just don't – I feel so bad for dude now. I mean, now there's a reason that he's in there because BB with the hamstring and blah, blah, blah. So they don't really have, like – I mean, Robin, that – whatever. There's not a viable option in that same prototype, yeah. you know? Like, he fits yeah. that mold the way they want it. So, like, I get that part of it, but, like – Oh, the guy cannot catch the ball, and like it's sad, and I feel bad, but you got to get him off the field. You can't catch. Well, the ball. yeah, you got to be ecstatic if you're a defender covering him because yes. he, even if he gets open, he's probably not going to get the ball, and then even if he does get the ball thrown to him, he's probably not going to catch it. This is like uh, reminds me of running the ball on fourth down when you have Aaron Rodgers as your quarterback. As a defense, who are you more afraid of? Whether you yeah. know what's coming or not. You're more afraid of Aaron Rodgers. Why would you take the ball out of his hands and run it? I mean, great play by, who was it, Harrison Smith, cutting down yeah. the line and taking whatever. And it was a huge, huge, huge play in the game. Yeah. But, well, running running straight at Linval Joseph is always the best idea you can have. Yeah. So real quick on the, uh, as we like wrap up the Packers game, what do you make of that team slash is McCarthy going to survive this season? There's no way he's the coach next year, right? Unless they win the rest of their games. God almighty. Uh, that ain't happening. Now they, they have to play. I think they have to play the bear, the bears on the road still. Um, and some other team it's tough, but I can't remember. Their um, schedule is definitely like weaker, obviously than the Vikings. But Yeah. They still have two road games. I feel like and they're, they're not going to, do no um so i think no never mind but yeah i I don't i don't think he sticks around it looks looks like rogers is just pretty much fed up with him and and collinsworth was trying to defend him last night one of the dumb things he said last night you know saying how he has 10 wins like so many so many seasons of 10 wins and how can you just how can he be on the hot seat and it's like why why do you think he has 10 wins like it's not because of his great play calling. Yeah. It's because that guy under center. Mm-hmm. And it's pretty obvious when you watch them now that he did so much to hide their bad play, I guess. Big like he, well, and just because you can tell that he's not as mobile as he normally is. And maybe that's like yeah, he's, he's, still, he's old still or hurt. whatever. Like, yeah, I mean, he's still amazing and he still scrambled really well. But you could tell there wasn't that like next year get out of this. And no, it wasn't a like million miles down the field. Crazy like Russell Wilson escapability like he used to probably have a couple years ago. Yeah. Um, but I mean, his receivers didn't really help him out last night either, you know. Devontae Adams dropping that wide open TD pass. I saw some people blame that on Rodgers, but I'm like, nah, he put the ball where it sh- it should have been. So, and what Adams do you? Did the, he did the dive thing instead of the keep running deal, which I feel like at yeah. times guys can pick the wrong one. And but he's uh, he's better than Thielen, so. Yeah. I mean, I don't think so. But <laughs> uh, let's well, talk about well, the the big. He's, he's more athletic than Thielen. Yeah. I would, that I would agree with. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about the big uh, – we haven't touched on it yet, but the big story coming out of the game. At the end of the game, Xavier Rhodes yep. gets beat, grabs his hamstring. <laughs> uh, Twitter doctor yeah. seems to think it's season-ending surgery. Mike Zimmer gave his press conference today and was like, nah. There were a couple not. of Twitter Twitter doctors that were saying like, oh, I just saw Rhodes' hamstring break in half. I've never seen that before. And then – he was still able to limp off the field by himself. He was still able to leave the locker room but by he himself. Was walking off the field, it looked like a cramp. He had a cramp. Yeah, he wasn't. He wasn't wheeled out in a wheelchair or did he didn't need crutches leaving the building last night. Um, Mike Zimmer came out and said today that yeah, it's a very, very mild injury. Um, I don't know what his status is for for Sunday. But at the same time, I don't think it should be that big of a problem if he has to miss a game or two. The Vikings' defensive depth has played very well this year, um, and I don't, I don't, I, the Patriots. You know, they don't have an amazing group of receivers. They have some some da- dangerous weapons on offense, but it's not like if you don't have Rhodes out there, then you know you're doomed. You don't. That's, I've been hearing this argument like a fair amount today. Is like the oh man, and now Tom Brady is is like. 
Tom Brady would have done that whether Xavier Rhodes was on the field or not. Tom Brady is not playing that well this year. And if he – I just don't – if if that secondary is going to get torn apart, it's not going to be because Xavier Rhodes was, like, not there to save the day, you know? And and the Vikings held, uh, I believe, Drew Brees to, what, 120 yards passing a couple of weeks ago without Rhodes on the field. That's true. So – That's true. I think I think they're more than capable, and and for the rest of the season, really, they're not playing anyone who has like a group of receivers that are game breaking. I mean, the Seahawks they have Doug Baldwin, but he's not as good as he used to be. The Dolphins don't have anybody. The, the Lions don't. They trade away Golden Tate, and the Bears don't have anybody. So, yeah. who is at Galladay kid or whatever in Detroit? Yeah, he's he's pretty good, he's pretty good but, but I mean, you're not. Yeah, that's you're not gonna. Ray Wayne's can cover him. Yes, that's what I was just gonna say. They have the players. To, Secretly uh, having a very good year, by the way, string lanes. He is. I would agree with that completely. And I also think that Xavier Rhodes, whether it's injuries or otherwise, not yeah, having no. as great of a season, which, you no. know, happens because you can't – I mean, very few players play at an all-pro level for, like, you know, six years in a row or whatever. So it's – Harrison's uh, fan. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but but a dip is not crazy. Oh, yeah. No, he's – I mean, this isn't the end of the world. He's still a very he's great a player. Off. Yeah. He's been hurt a lot this year too, and and some of the his I think some of his lack of success has been more towards the beginning of the season. You could say that about a lot of the players on the Vikings defense mm-hmm. earlier in the season. So speaking of players on the Vikings defense out with injury, Barr came back. Did you notice what? I mean, yeah. they look pretty good, but would they have looked that good with not Barr out there? Probably. I think. Yeah. We don't talk about it a lot, and I don't hear it talked about a lot, but the key to the success for this football team, especially defensively, is that defensive line. When they can rush oh, yeah. four guys and get pressure the way they got pressure yesterday and then drop all those dudes, like, that's really difficult yeah. to play. Like the Neil Hunter, there was that play where Bakhtiari went out for the Packers and – immediately Daniel Hunter just destroyed their, their backup left half. He didn't get the sack, but he just, like, led the charge of all that the guys. That may have been the most inevitable sack in the history <laughs> yeah. of, like, NFL football. Like, <laughs> everyone everyone called it. Even the Packers were like, all right, well, whatever. <laughs> but That was great because even Collinsworth no, was like, oh, God. <laughs> I saw someone, yeah, I saw someone last night about saying how, like, Everson Griffin could be, like, a cap casualty next year. And I'm just like, I don't think that would be the greatest idea because – how good was this pass rush when he was out earlier this year? It really wasn't as good. It was not. I think even if he might not be, you know, getting the getting the sacks or pressures that he, yes. you know, used to, his presence on the field is more than enough for other guys on that defensive line to get free. Like Sheldon Richardson's been playing out of his mind since Griffin's been back. Daniel Hunter's just been playing out of his mind the whole year, and even guys like Stephen Weatherly has been playing well. So. And Tom Tom Johnson too, you know, all those guys just but I think that core four is really like what drives, you know, the success of the defense. They're able to do like a lot more stuff on defense. Yeah. They like I feel like the Vikings showed a lot of blitz last night, but they didn't really blitz a lot because they were getting so much pressure from the defense. Yeah. Defensive line. So yeah, it's it, it definitely runs through that, that defensive line. So for sure. So they need need those guys to stay healthy. Um I don't really know how to transition into this, but kicker dude missed two again. And what are we to do about kickers in general? Mike Calm Zimmer, down. <laughs> Mike Calm Zimmer down. at halftime decided he was never going to kick another field goal again in his whole life. Made all his other, forever. made all his other kicks. Uh, one other those kick, were, or do you have those those an extra kicks. point? He made, he made that first one. He made the fifty-one yarder. He did. Was... It should be noted that yes, he made the fifty-one yarder, and that uh, false start was garbage. And then he that was on like everybody. That was on the Packers and the Vikings. If I remember. But yeah, I'm I'm not worried about it. Zimmer Zimmer actually said he's really not worried about it. He has like still a ton of confidence in Bailey, so I think that's a very good sign that Zimmer's the guy being like, eh, he's fine. He's he's uh, good. He makes every he makes every kick in, in practice, so you know, there shouldn't be That also is sure. starting to like really great like well, he makes them all in practice. Does he? Did Dan, yeah, but did, I mean, did the other guy too? Because are we starting to learn that maybe kicking in a stadium full of people when the pressure's on is a little different than kicking in I practice do. when he makes them all? I could make I a lot in practice. I, I did have the feelings of nervousness <laughs> again last night when the kicker 
lined up for a field goal. And I'm like, ah, oh, God, why can't I ever just not <laughs> Just not worry about it. Can't I just, yeah. like, take three points and be like, nice. But I, but I, yeah. Drive but football team, well done. I tweeted out something last night that I said, hear. like, Adam Vinatieri would miss field goal kicks in a Vikings uniform. So mm-hmm. it's pretty much just the uniform at this I point. I truly, truly believe yeah. that. Because Daniel, what Daniel Carlson got special teams player of the, the week last week. Yep, hit a game winner. Me has yeah. he's, he's like seven of eight since he's yeah. been in Oakland. Yeah. Although, not as many pressure situations. Game game winning. I mean, he did. He made Good it. Goal. I can't argue with it. Why couldn't he do okay. that when we needed him to like? Think about this, Adam. If he doesn't do that. They beat that Packers team in Green Bay, and think about where they would be. They'd only seven, be, and, eh, seven and three, and they'd be like definitely like a click above the rest of the muck in the NFC playoff standings. Which we'll also talk about a little bit. Also, later. the the Buffalo loss not starting to look that bad anymore. Yeah, it's true. Maybe they've, they've got four wins. It's true. Yeah, every week it looks four and better. Six. Oh, you know what else I saw? That's real fun is uh, the Packers and the Browns have the same amount <laughs> of wins. Yeah. Wonderful. Browns are, Browns are playing good. Yeah. I like Baker got, Mayfield. Got rid of Hugh and pff, surprise, everything's better. Don't blame no one, no one, no one, no one could have predicted that. Did you see, how do you feel about, so Hugh gets they fired. They trolled the <laughs> get out of him yesterday. So, yeah, so he gets fired and then accepts a job in Cincinnati. And that's yeah, who but... Cleveland was playing. But they like if you're playing for Cleveland, are you bummed that he goes to Cincinnati, a team you no. play twice a year? Or you would, you just like, whatever? Wouldn't you want that? That's what, if yeah. you think he's a horrible coach, wouldn't See, you want him to be? On that the is bank? exactly my angle. Baker Mayfield's on like doing his press conference. Like, like, no, sure. Yeah, it's like wow, sure. you would yeah. Dude, you just scored like fifty points on the Bengals. That so. would be like me rooting for McCarthy to Go to the Bears. His job. No, yeah, I want him to keep his job. That's the thing I want. This is great yeah. for us yeah. right now. Yeah. I hope this continues yeah. forever. Lose his job and then take over the Lions. God, that sounds wonderful. Can that happen? Well, uh, they won't fire Patricia after one year, though. Well, they wouldn't they? have to get. They wouldn't have to get any like different size clothes. So that's good at least. Yeah, they could <laughs> swap the locker out. No so kickers are scary. We talked a little bit about DeFilippo and the offensive coordinator oh, and for that, that stuff, but what? Okay, I, I wish. Is it time to like kind of think about Prefer? I think it and is. There's what other move. All these you have? all these kickers keep coming in and keep keep missing. Yes, there is one still there. constant. Still there. Yes, and here's the thing that is maybe bothers me the most is not that he like still has a job. I'm not saying that we should fire the dude. Why isn't anyone talking about it? Yeah, it's why been it so lame? long since we've had a field goal kicker that is, like, not a heart attack. Like, why yep. is yep. nobody discussing it? I and, I mean, I, I feel like Cordero, Cordero Patterson probably gave him a couple more years with his job. That's than true. Marcus Sherrill probably, probably helps a lot. Yeah, and, he had a nice return last night. Mm-hmm. And he that's yeah. all he does, and that's all he's, he's done he's for gonna, all these years is he just catches gonna, it, runs it a little bit. He's going to be on the Vikings for like 19 years. Just I'm saying ring of honor for that guy. So, oh, yeah, so, cl- like, just clutch. Clutch. All he does. That's all he, he does. He came up with the fumble, fumble right? He did. Month, of course he did. Month, okay. Of course yeah. he did. Of course, <laughs> of course he did. He's a special teams wizard, man. That's what they do. You know who else was that for a hot minute? Adam Thielen. You know what he did? Scored a touchdown, blocked a punt. That's yeah. what they do, special teams. Well, guys. yeah. But Marcus Sherrill's on offense, so he'll catch 93 passes. So. Yeah, it's true. I'm not sure if you've seen that on Twitter, but I have. Yeah. So, yeah, man, the kickers are, I don't know what to do, and I think it is time that we talk about prefer. I think that that's the only logical, what is the definition of insanity is to like keep bringing yeah because i kickers, assuming i understand i understand kickers missing and stuff you it's they deserve a certain amount of the blame but if you know guys keep coming in and missing kicks who didn't previously miss a lot of kicks yes there's got me uh got me something going on there that's if you're the owner of a store and your manager has a ton of different employees that come through and the store is still struggling. Yeah. You fire the manager. Yep. 
I think it's time to maybe fire the manager. Not calling for anybody's job. Yeah, I don't know. I just think it needs to be looked at. That's all. Just That's, yep. Just want to talk. Eva- about it. Evaluated. I wouldn't be surprised if they made a move. Maybe you know, give George Edwards an actual job on the sidelines I mean, instead of being a fake defensive coordinator. That's got to be the best gig, like in the world. <laughs> like, oh, oh, you, no. That's a pretty cool resume here, but where were you? Yes, yeah, number one defense year after did you year call, after did you year. Call but... Any of the plays? Nope. Nope. Did you uh, pick anyone for the depth chart? Nope. 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 Did you have anything to do with like the scheme or like game yeah, plan? I got- I got oh, Zimmer's man. coffee every day. Yeah, so. Sometimes I would suggest things that he would say no to. What a gig. Yeah. Um, we talked a little bit while we already kind of did the offensive coordinator thing. Mm-hmm. I'm still very skeptical on it. Yeah. No, you should be. I think, um, yeah. I just, this team is so easily one dimensional. And when they get one dimensional, it's, you can win against Green Bay. But if you're playing a New Orleans, if you're playing the Rams, if you're playing yeah, if you're going you know, against if you're going against a team where obviously they have like a weak part of their offense that is their passing defense, yeah, obviously you want to attack that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you can still attack that by doing you know some play action, which is you know established by the run. Yeah, I, I'm starting to think though that that the Vikings were kind of spoiled last year with what what Schirmer did because you know he called some some pretty amazing games. He did. Um, not having that much luck with the Giants this year, but that's a different story. He's got doesn't really have a quarterback, um, but yeah, he 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 called some great plays last year. Got got guys, you know, used the best of their abilities and got feeling the ball and just ran. They I think they ran the ball the second most of any team last year. So he made a very he, mediocre offensive line almost a like non-issue for that yeah. team which is like incredible and maybe like the highest compliment you can give a play caller is that like our by far our biggest weakness was almost like not an issue for the majority of the season which is obscene i also think that because of all these years of adrian peterson and where you just you have to run the ball because he's yep. your best player i think that also is kind of skewing people's um I guess, opinion of it and maybe skewing mine, but I feel like I get it. Diggs, Thielen, they're good, but you have to be able to distribute the ball. Well, it doesn't look like good teams. It doesn't look like he's going to get a a chance to beat the Vikings in the playoffs this year anymore. So what a turd also, or just discipline the Vikings. Oh, whoa. (laughs) That's That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, NFC East, I've been talking a lot of smack about that division, but now I'm looking at, like, the playoff standings, and they're going to have two teams in there with the because of Washington and uh, division leading. Who's leading the division Washington's now? six and five. I'm just saying. That, but nobody else, like, everybody's and they have six no, and five. And they lost their quarterback. Cole McCoy looks pretty good, dude. Oh, they're going to get in over the – they're going to get over the Panthers? <laughs> Or over the Seahawks. Who do you think makes the playoffs in the end? I know we've kind of gone through this a couple of times, but like, do you uh, think Seattle, Carolina are still? Seattle is a very easy schedule. I mean, they play the 49ers twice, Cardinals oh, once. Awesome. Four, four of their five are at home. So they're probably in the playoffs. you got to think they're in. Uh, the Panthers starting to look iffy. they got to play the Saints twice. Um, I don't think the Falcons are in it anymore. No. Too far. Yeah. Um, the Eagles are still in it. I don't know how. Uh, unbelievable. Co- and that Cowboys is... are Cowboys are playing better. Um, but I would probably go with the Saints, Rams, Bears, Vikings, Seahawks. Uh, I guess Cowboys. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. Unfortunately. Um, cause I want to argue with you, but I think you're, you're totally right. I could see Carolina winning some of those games, like beating new Orleans once and, you know, sneaking in or whatever. And they, they want, I don't they want to, they want to knock out Drew Brees. Go right for, so, right. <laughs> go for it. Um, so do you think likeliest like playoff seed for the Vikings is going to be wild card? I don't think there's any way they leap the bears at this point, especially after the bears, didn't have their quarterback and somehow still won. 
in Detroit. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Um, yeah, what does that say about Mitchell Trubisky? By the way, yeah, uh, how good he is. Chase Daniel didn't look that bad. Um, think about that statement just then. Chase Daniel uh, didn't look I, that bad. I don't know. I'm still not sold on the Bears because I didn't think they looked they looked that good against the Vikings. The Vikings had plenty of opportunities to to win that game. They had three turn, turnovers. Yes. Um, so I'm not counting the Vikings out of the division. Yet yeah, there's still five games left, and they're a game and a half behind. So they still have, they can still make that up easily. They they have to win these next two games because you know the rest of the schedule is easy, and then you know it might come down to the final game of the year and probably be on Sunday night. So. That would be a really exciting uh, game. Do you think there's any way the Vikings win these next two games? Yeah, the think- Patriots. This is a Good year to play the Patriots. It is. That is very true. I will give you. They're very beatable. Uh, The Seahawks. They're playing better than people thought, but they're beatable too. They gave up a lot of yards to the the Panthers yesterday. Mm -hmm. That was a fun game to watch, but it looked like teams that I think both of those teams, the the Vikings, can beat both those teams. Yeah, they're. they're, This isn't. It's not going to be like. It's not the Seahawks of old. It's not the Patriots of old. So. Yeah, timing wise, I think. Well, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the Patriots and the upcoming game. I think timing wise, this is about is, I guess earlier, maybe it would be a little bit better because the Patriots always get going, but this is like the time of the year when they do this because they start playing their divisional games and they start beating up on their horrible divisional opponents. And then you play them in week 15 and it's your donezo because they got everything rolling. Yeah. Yep. They're undefeated so, at home. This I think, year. yeah, I think the Vikings are lucky in that sense, but it's going to be hard to go there and win a football game. No, oh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a hard place to play. I think, I think in December the Patriots have lost like one game since like 2011. That's so. disgusting. <laughs> that's <laughs> also, so outrageous. They've also had a lot better team than they do this year. Like yeah. their pass defense, I think their pass defense is like 25th in the league. So. They've given up 22 touchdowns, which is, you know, not good when you're going against Kirk Cousins and Thielen and Diggs. Mm -hmm. So that's an advantage for for the Vikings for sure. Their rush defense isn't really that much better either. Um, And the Vikings defense has has been good against the last couple games and shutting down quarterbacks and and receivers. I feel like the Vikings defense, like the first couple drives of the game, but kind of like let the offense do whatever they have to do and – think that they can do certain things and then like a flip of the switch and they just shut everything down. I feel like mm-hmm. it's going or, on. Yeah, or one adjustment or something, but it, yeah. it looked pretty abrupt when they figured out how to stop whatever it was they were doing. And that's the thing. Everything I hear about Tom Brady every year is that the way to get to Tom Brady and the way to affect him is to that's rush, right. rush at him from the middle. Well, the Vikings happen to uh, do that. At yeah, times, or at least healthy. make it look like they're going to do that. And if they yeah. can get pressure from their front four, like we discussed earlier, I think they could win the game. Yeah. Um, the one thing that bothers me is that I think James White, the running back, is their top receiver. Mm-hmm. Vikings uh, haven't been that great against covering good running backs who can catch. And then Gron- Gronkowski's back, too, so someone's going to have to cover him i don't know if like j ron curse will be on him or, or or somebody like that or harrison smith even so let's talk for a second about j ron curse what do you think i have been very, made some play last night very impressed with him the last couple of games had but a good year i was very on the fence with him he was like my biggest question mark when when all the injuries were happening and i knew he was gonna have to play i was very unsure about him he has yep. proven me wrong man he looks so good he can come and hang out and play defense no, he's yeah, definitely he's, he's definitely awesome. he's definitely progressed. He's found a role like on the Vikings defense. He's not in there every down, but you know he's he gets in there and makes the most of his opportunities. I think he had that nice jump pass breakup, or whatever, on yep. Jimmy Graham last night. Yep. A- Anthony Harris has looked good this year. You know, Sandejo, don't miss you. Um, did you see that? What was that play where the Packers ran the ball last night and Anthony Harris just like dive? dove on top of the pile for like no reason yes i did see that it was like totally pair like almost like limbo, yeah it's like the limbo stop. celebration and then he was like Ooh. dude we haven't even uh, talked about the yeah. limbo celebration that was stop pretty everything good. That's pretty good that's pretty good that's where do you probably the, probably the 
right behind the the dead arm dance probably really because dead arm dance is that how, you know i like it's arm just dance so too. stupid because it's, it's just so stupid <laughs> it's so awesome and Kirk Cousins. It, yeah, Kirk Cousins. Anybody else, it's not the same. But with Kirk Cousins, it's so much better. Yeah. Do you put it on the same level or higher level than the Duck Duck Gray Duck dance? I think it's it's same level, like that 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 kind of elite elite level. You know that and Leapfrog or whatever they did last yeah, year. No, no, Leapfrog's not on that level. What? No, nope, that's a that's a tear down. That's a tear what down. What about what they have? Or they do they did the Thanksgiving dinner on I, Thanksgiving last year. That was I that did was like good. That they had another one that we're missing that I can't. Uh, it was it was just as good as the uh, as the Duck Duck Great Duck. But yeah, I thought Limbo was great. Um, conspiracy theory, real quick. Uh, immediately after the Limbo, going to commercial NBC, they got the Limbo music on. Conspiracy <laughs> theory. Oh, uh, somebody knew. They knew. I don't know. They're pretty. First touchdown. Good. We're doing the limbo. Internet's work pretty good, pretty quick these days. So I mean, you're right, quick. and it's US Bank Stadium, and that internet's is super fast. So NBC, NBC uh, pays a lot of money for that football, so they're probably going to make sure they have a, a soundtrack for everything. Yeah, there's a lot of windows in there too, so I think that helps the internet speed. Oh yeah, yeah, it's probably the walls to pass through. So yeah, I mean, yeah. it's it's science then really that Dig, they got it there. But... Digs had his what Namaste. Uh, celebration i like that one i liked it it was original yeah original and i'm starting to as the like group celebrations are becoming I'm, more and more popular i'm starting to lean single dude yeah celebration. i'm glad the vikings haven't like picked up on the trend of every time a team gets a turnover they have to run all the way to the end zone and take like a group picture with, with everybody dude this just in like group photo is over yeah it's over it's over. It unless, for a little unless bit, it's over. Everyone, unless everyone touches the ball, I mean, we don't need, you know, 19 guys in the end zone posing for, for a fake picture. And for a second, that was the funny part, that everybody yeah. was down there. And now it's just like, oh, you guys are the fourth team that has everybody running down. It's over. Fourth? It's over. Well, you, <laughs> it's like it was over at, Yeah, it was over at fourth, and we've, yeah, we, it's been going for way too long. But, yeah, I would agree. Limbo, you know – I'll just say it. I think Limbo is number one. I think Duck Duck really? Great X two. I really, really like the Limbo. I thought it was any, any recency bias. Yeah. I mean, maybe a little, but here's let me break it down for you. Number one, human prop. Yeah, can't go wrong there. Use it all pro, all pro prop. Yep. Thing number two, Duck Duck Great Duck didn't play the game accurately. That's not how you yeah. play the game. The I forget who went second, but they screwed it all up. That's not how the game works. Limbo perfectly executed there were two different uh participants in the limbo line i maybe three but i couldn't tell because the camera so that i mean these are all reasons adam that it's number one in my uh list of celebrations felt like it took a lot a long time like to set up like dig like You're like right. cook that was would, telling yeah. everybody like hey i want to do this and everyone's looking at each other like who's gonna be the limbo <laughs> well that's i see one's probably just like oh, i'll do it i actually that was exactly what happened i saw or heard an interview with Thielen, oh yeah, and he said that was it Diggs after was the game. Yeah, Diggs was supposed to do it because he was the skinniest dude. But when he weighs nine pounds less than Thielen, <laughs> is that true? Because <laughs> he's skinny. Those two are best friends, and it makes me so happy. But yeah, yeah, they okay. they were in like matching hats yesterday, backwards and everything, just I mean, like holding hands down the tunnel. It's. I feel like every time that they're in the same like area together there should just be that best friend song let me tell you about my best like Rob friend. from robin big yeah yes that's exactly it the theme song from that should just be who, playing all the time who were fake best friends yeah, yeah they were spoil <sighs> alert for anyone Dude, who... why you gotta ruin the show for everybody <laughs> Come on. it's all fake because <laughs> it, ru- it ruined it for me when i found that out it wait till you hear about santa claus oh <sighs> too soon too soon yeah dude conversation over i mean i guess <laughs> we can keep doing the podcast for a minute but um what were we talking about oh that should be our new segment is the uh we should judge evaluation evaluation yeah That's judge the, uh, evaluation God, and the name just see this is what i'm talking <laughs> about that's organic adam that's how good bits happen is yep. it just just like that that's that's good um so yeah patriots they're eight and three they're not the patriots that we're used to seeing but they're still no. pretty good. Yeah, they're good at 
they're playing at home. It's a later afternoon game. You know, it's on the road. Does this kind of feel like like one of those like uh, litmus test games where it's going to kind of tell us where the Vikings yeah. are at? Because if they can go um, in there and control the game, and I'm not saying they're going to win easily, but you know, like have a game where they're up I'd say to yes and no because yeah, if they go in and win, it's a big win. Mm-hmm. But if they lose, it's not the end of the world. It's not. It's an a- AFC opponent. Um, they still have six wins. They're still set up pretty well for getting into the playoffs. So, do you feel like I, the last two weeks it's been talked about it, like that these are must-win games for the Vikings? I'm not sure. I felt I think like last, that. For I think last either. night was. You think it was? I see because even if they if, lost, say they lose though, yeah. you still have another game against Chicago. Chicago still has. One or two tough game. I mean, you're not out of it, and especially in the wild card where literally everybody is six and five. Yeah. you can still make it into the playoffs. But at this at this time of year, you want to get like you want to get on a run. Yes. You, that's how that's how you go on a run in the playoffs. You just go into the into the postseason on a on a good streak on a on a run, playing well. You know, that's that's kind of how I felt they were last year, and then they ran to a wall known as the Eagles. Mm-hmm. And it definitely felt, I agree with you, because it definitely felt leading up to the game that the Packers were going one way and the Vikings were going another. So to lose that game, I think, would have been, yeah. could have been catastrophic. But I just don't, the must-win thing, when there's a ton of games left, and I just, I don't know. Yeah, week one must win. That's it. I mean, we're not that far from it being like, I know week three is, is early, but. Is this apparently a must the, win? Because if you're going and three, you don't make the playoff. Like, come on. Apparently, the Bills game was a must win. Yeah, it was. Now we know that. See, I like that. I like going gonna, in like six weeks from now. We can go back and be like, that was a must win. I still think it's going to come back to haunt them. The Bills game, of course it will. Of course it will. Oh, they'll it finish to. like a half game behind the Bears for the division. That tie. I still think the tie That's is going to be the yeah. yeah is going to be the the reason they can't do it. And then the kicker. I mean, we could we could go on for days with this, but but yeah, I don't know. The I, Patriots, I feel like they could beat the Patriots, but I just cannot. I did imagine. I did play around with the uh the playoff machine or whatever on ESPN today oh. and, and got the Vikings to the number 1 seed. So did they win all of their games? Yes. Okay. And the Saints and Rams lost all of their games. All of their games. <laughs> <laughs> But I did get the Bucks, Giants, and Lions into the playoffs too. Okay. With that scenario. The Bucks. Yeah, the Bucks are still in it. Somehow. It's, I just. Lions are NFL still in it. NFL this season is so dumb. There are the so Giants, many teams that Giants I are still. Have written out the Giants are a great example. I thought if, at the beginning of this season, I thought Philadelphia was real good and the Giants were real bad, and they are basically like oh, operating yeah. at the same level right now. And I mean, there's a lot to do with that on both sides. But I mean, the Giants only have three wins. They're not that good, but yeah, they're making me yawn. That's how good they are. Yeah, dude, um, God, like get excited about the podcast, so I, bud. Jeez. They, yeah, all the, all these teams would basically that I did in the scenario would basically have to win like every single one of their remaining games. Yeah. Yeah, the one seed probably not going to happen for the Vikings, but getting a three or four seed is definitely still a possibility. One hundred percent. Do you feel like this team has Super Bowl? Is this a Super Bowl capable team? Mm. I don't want to say contender because that feels crazy. I don't know if contender is the right word, but I don't think so anymore. I don't not, really either. Not here's not how I've season. been optimistically. Here's how I've been looking at it. Would I like to be proven wrong? Yeah, that would be. Well, yeah. I feel like if the Vikings get in and they win one game, if they can win that first playoff game, then I think they got a chance. But obviously, the most if they win and they is, play the Rams next. I yeah. Feel like. Well, I mean, see, yeah. I think their their best hope would be for like the Saints to get upset by like the Panthers or somebody. Yeah. In the playoffs, and then that would probably be their their best shot. Although I, you know, it's not out of the realm. But they played well. Yeah, they played well against the Saints, but. On the road against the Saints is no way. that one. I don't think they can win. I think they can go to L.A. and oh, beat yeah. the Rams. I think that is 
is plausible. So they can win the first one, go to L.A. That, I think, is doable. But, see, here's the problem is that when they play good teams, they turn one-dimensional, and with the offensive line what it is, they're donezo when you face a really good team. Well, yeah, you would like to think by then, though, if they're, if they're playing well, then they've figured out a way to make the offensive line not that much of a factor. You'd hope and, so. Uh, you know, with the Rams, they, they won't have Cooper Cup. Um, their defense is not that great. Even though they paid a bunch of money, Aaron Donald is, is a beast. But yeah, he is. It's true. Like Khalil Mack, um, you just got to find a way to avoid him, which the Vikings didn't for some reason. Um, but no, a lot more tape I, on Goff. That will help. Yeah, Zimmer. yeah. I don't. I don't. I'm not. I've jumped off the boat for a Super Bowl this year for the Vikings. I wrote, wrote about it last week, and just would you? The thing that got me like jumping off or whatever is like. Their next game that they have on the schedule against the Dolphins or against the Lions, no one would be surprised if they lost those games. Yeah. And if you're a Super Bowl contender, you don't lose those games. You don't do that. Yeah. So that's kind of my yeah. It would supporting take, factor or whatever. Yeah, it would take like a um oh who did like a Joe Flacco like. That yeah, I mean, you year can... where he just went bananas for all those games, and the, like it would take it's, something like that, I think, for it's, them to. Re- it's, and I don't it's, that. it's really actually really simple to see like who the teams are that are going to qualify for the Super Bowl every year. They're always the teams that are just you know they win the games they're supposed to, and then they you know play well on the road, and give themselves a shot to win or whatever, and they they go on long long streaks. Yeah, and that's what the Vikings did last year. And then close games go on streaks. It's, yeah. it's not the not the case this year. They're winning the games that they're supposed to, but you know they, they need to get important wins. They need to beat a team with a winning record. First off, they haven't done that this year yet. Yes. Um, so you know, beating New England would be a start if they beat New England and they beat the Seahawks. You're gonna get me to probably want to climb back on that band bandwagon. Yeah. You know. Yeah, if they man, you're right. If they win the two games these next two games then that kind of changes things but i, I think you and then they lose the dog yeah exactly and that and, well, and <laughs> see, seeing yeah. and that's what i'm saying is they just have not been consistent enough and in the grand scheme of things and i think this was part of the problem because last year they were so good and had so that was such a fun season anything less than a super bowl appearance this year is going to be deemed a failure by a lot of people i think and i don't even believe that to be the case this is going to be like a pretty successful season if they can get to the playoffs if they win a game in the playoffs i feel like it's a successful season yeah what i think the circumstances they've dealt with too i think people forget to factor that into you know you had the the death of tony sperano you lost nick easton before the season even started you know you you got a new quarterback and a new system so and the defense wasn't playing offensive, that great yeah. beginning of the year. Offensive coordinator hasn't called plays in like six years or some ridiculous thing, whatever yeah. that is. So, so what what they're work that's why I, I just laugh at the people who say like Zimmer should be fired or whatever, because they just don't factor in everything that he's dealt with pretty much every single year. Every that season he's been here. He's been, been there. Yeah, the the Peterson suspension, the Brit Bridgewater's knee falling off, uh, trading for Bradford. You know Bradford going down last year in Keenum, yeah. North Turner quitting, all this yeah, crazy dude, the year, stuff. Dude, the like, year they win the Super Bowl is the year is just normal. Be the most when boring. Nothing, yeah, <laughs> when nothing really happens, we're not gonna we're gonna hate it. We're not gonna have anything to talk about except that's for the ne- Super Bowl win. I'll I mean, take it. That's never gonna happen. So, how with that it's kind not, of an attitude? It's not. It's not, it's not that's just not the way the Vikings are. It's true. Right. Like other teams get injuries and stuff every year, and then the Vikings just get like random weird stuff that just takes yeah, a huge non-football point. related issues. It's like, oh, cool, great. Uh, it just and then the kicker. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, it's not, uh, there's not you... a whole lot to do about that. The, the 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 ink from the jersey just like seeps into their blood and <laughs> into their brain. Like honestly, it's just it's maybe it's the lighting with the purple on the helmet. Maybe they missed the, they missed them when they were outside too in TCF. So I just don't. What's don't what's Gary? Know. Yeah, what's Gary Anderson's excuse then? No, I'm saying the purple from the helmet. There's like a reflection. Oh, I thought helmet. you meant. Like, 
in like U.S. Bank Stadium. But no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's just the purple that they see out of the corner of their oh, eye that they probably wouldn't even know that they were seeing. Adam, it's probably. So I didn't see. Uh, I didn't see Gary Anderson wish. No, Randy Moss, uh, happy Hall of Fame induction last night. I didn't see him on there. I wonder why. You know, I don't think they let him come to the parties. <laughs> I think he <laughs> doesn't get to come back. That's, a, that's <laughs> like a scene from a movie where, like, everyone's having a good time, and then Gary Anderson walks in, and everyone's just quiet. Totally. <laughs> Gary Anderson. What's that uh, super bad where he's Gary Anderson is the guy, like, making a phone call when the dude walks up. was like, what are you doing? You can't be at this party. Oh, you yeah, making yeah, a phone yeah. call on my phone. Yeah. It's Gary Anderson. Oh, man, I thought it was cool. I watched that today, but Super it was great. on TV. Great That's film. a good movie. Great That's film. Movie. Great film. Uh, do you want to do a score prediction for the Patriots? Sure, why not? I think it's going to be high scoring. Um, well, I don't have a pen, so I'm not going to be able to write it down. Okay. All right. I got my phone. Just kidding. All right. Just kidding. It's cool. We'll, we'll document it, Adam, even though we, like, never go back. To, except today. We went back on our – I looked <laughs> – today and we didn't get it right but i actually did look today so what good sir is your prediction no, 36 31 whoa 30. it's not gonna be like high scoring like chiefs and rams but you know we go yeah, in the well, 30s I mean, that was the highest scoring game in nfl history right no uh combined score combined score yeah no, no, no. It wasn't. It was not. Um, it was the first time two teams scored over 50 points. Oh, right. Right. It was the highest scoring game on Monday Night Football. That was what I was thinking. That I am not I am not looking forward to listening to that announcing group for four hours Woo! in two weeks. Oh, man. I, I'm de- I've been already debating, like, if I'm just going to mute the TV and just watch you know, it down. I've tried to do that. I cannot watch football games if that I'm not like listening to the announcers. It drives me crazy. And I cannot stand that announcing group and I'm gonna have to just go through it. Oh no, they you just, know what? The ESPN two has the Spanish. Uh, yes, the Spanish and it's super fun and I learned a lot. It was hard for me to read what was going on as far as players and stats and stuff. Yeah. I mean players I could read, but the rest of it not so much. Maybe I'll try that out. I'll try yeah. that out. I mean it's pretty fun. Well and you're like, you know, San Diego City probably see more oh, yeah. uh, like Spanish my neighbor speak yeah that's what i'm saying so like that's probably good for you on a number of different levels yeah. um although i am not bilingual i do enjoy it and uh yeah, it's a much see. better option than, <laughs> and it's a much better option than than jason when he's i that's mean for him i just it's not his fault that he's he just, not tony romo but it's a bad squad and also where did the like do you remember the when Monday Pope Night? Pope. Yeah, do do you remember when Monday Night Football was like the like creme de la creme? It was like the greatest oh. announcers and the great. And now it's like booger in like a Rand- booger mobile. Come on, Randy Moss, yes, watching him on Randy on Monday Night against the Packers. Randy Night Football is actually perfect. That yeah, was like a perfect slip that you had just then. That was amazing. Yeah. Oh, I should. Ooh, sounds like a shirt. T-shirt idea. <laughs> um. <laughs> Excuse yeah, me, it's definitely these. not. Yeah, it's definitely not what it used to be. No, it's just like I don't even like. Like you used to watch those games because of the announcers, mm-hmm. and now I don't watch them because of the announcers. Is there any announcing crew that you will like flip a game on and stick with just because? I like of the Charles Davis. Crew? Charles Davis and um, it's not Tom Brenneman, Kevin Burkhart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I don't mind. They do, one. I think they did the the Forty Niners game, mm-hmm. for the Vikings and Forty Niners. Yep. Um, but yeah, I don't mind those guys. Those guys are pretty not pretty knowledgeable, and they don't just sp- spread out ra- random like players that aren't even on the team or anything. Oh, yeah. so, Spielman's tough for me to listen to. So, yeah. He knows a lot, but he talks a lot too. And Boy, it's tough. the guy, the guy he's with is an idiot. So yeah. there's you a. Know who I do really like. And I don't even. I don't even really like, anymore. Tarico, he was on Sunday Night Football. Oh, yeah, the other, uh, I enjoyed. Night. Yeah, I enjoyed like, that. Man. He, oh yeah, he called the. Uh, I watched the Syracuse game a couple weeks ago when they got blown out oh, yeah. by Notre Dame. Yes, God, dang it! Three I meant to make Monday. fun of you for that for weeks. They um, played Notre Dame. They knocked the quarterback out. Did you <laughs> see what kind of the uniforms, uniforms Notre Dame yeah. was wearing? Syracuse had there. There was like not Syracuse a single, uniforms look good compared to that. That's what I'm saying. There was not a single like uh, 
in all of the curses in all of Notre Dame's history, like those were the uniforms that deserved to get beat the most. Who approved of? Oh, it's awful. Awful. Hey. And then they were all wearing the Yankees jerseys that said Notre Dame yeah. and the Yankees font. It's like you I did like yeah, I did like the coat. I did like the coat that had the the Notre Dame and the Yankees font, whatever. Speaking of a Syracuse. Syracuse though, good. Good this year. Big season. Nine and three. I've been paying attention to him Rank. because I knew that Rank. you have been paying attention to him for your thing. Ranked so. Rank for the first time since 2001. I know. I heard on national radio they were talking about the Notre Dame-Syracuse game. I was like, wow, right? dude. Yeah, not just wow. the basketball school. No, that's exciting. I also saw that they misspelled Bayheim. Yeah. The basketball <laughs> team, which is kind of important. Not the place to do that. Or <laughs> like. How do you spell probably, Beheim? Go look at the probably, court. It's written yeah, yeah. on the court. <laughs> probably you spelled that name a couple of times over you the years. Would think. Yeah. Oh man, maybe here's another conspiracy theory. That's probably Jim Beheim being probably because like, his probably because his name son's wrong. name cut him probably down because his name is probably because his name is Buddy. That's probably why they spelled it wrong. Shut up! That is not yeah. his name. Yeah, it is Buddy Beheim. It's his nickname, but yeah, oh, that's what okay. that's what they that's what they, like, that's what they that's what they call him. That's what they list name. list him in the media guide and stuff. Buddy Beheim. I can't even wrap my brain around that. That is amazing. Wow. Good and stuff. how do you? Yeah, misspelling it. That's insane. Well, uh, <laughs> this has been fun. College football, Syracuse. This very. Yeah. Uh, we've covered. It I all didn't. Time. I didn't watch any of that. What nine, 19 overtime game or whatever that played this, the other night. I saw, I saw I was like, Jesus, seven overs. I know. That was the thing that got me was I, I turned on where I was paying attention on Twitter, and I saw it was at three, and I'm like, ah, it's going to be over. I wound up turning to it to see, like, the seventh or whatever, like, the final yeah. possession. It was insane. Absolutely incredible. That was a fun game. I might be falling back in love with college football. The Gophers have been terrible forever. Gophers just won the axe. They beat Wisconsin. Yeah. That's a huge they, deal. They, they're bowl eligible. They won six games. They have. This was their uh-huh. sixth. There you go. And bowl eligible is something that we've grown accustomed to here, but it's always the Outback Bowl. It's always you know, it's always bad. <laughs> Holiday Bowl. Yeah, exactly. No, I like, think they, honestly, I think those are the two most recent they've played. I, I think they came. They were in San Diego, not last year, the year before. Yeah, yeah. They. So those are not crazy, but I tell you what, that coach Adam, he looks uh, pretty good. Yes. DJ Fleck, yeah. He's got a chance. He looks good elite. there for couple years before he leaves. Mm. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the same thing. Same thing for the Syracuse kids. It's like as easy as making fun of the kickers on the Vikings podcast. Yeah. Oh, he's going to miss it. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we'll see you. We'll see you Sunday because we're going to do a post game. Yeah, we'll do it. It's not Sunday. late at night for me. It's never been late at night for you. Right. All right. Skull Vikes. See you next week. Go. Bye. Peace.